I'm going to catch up to you guys. I'm going to find my left tail and my right tail high squared critical value for this situation where I have a 95% confidence level, a sample size of 37, and the sample standard deviation is this. Technically, this would be finding a confidence interval for um, a, a population standard deviation. That would be the ultimate goal, but for now, we're just doing those two critical values. So I have a 95% confidence level, which gives me alpha, 1 minus 0.95, or 0.05. You need to divide, because that's your area, divide it in half. So 0.025, which kind of we did in the last example. And when I draw my chi-squared distribution, it's skewed to the right. And I always label my graph. So this is a chi-squared distribution, which starts at 0. Um, the area in the left tail is 0.025, and the area in the right tail is 0.025. That's why we cut it in half. I will do my right tail chi squared critical value. I don't know what I did it before. Okay, so my left tail chi squared critical value is in yellow, which is the value that separates this area from the rest, or the chi squared critical value in the left tail. And my right tail chi-squared critical value is red. Um, and my right tail chi-squared critical value, right, is the one that separates this area in the right tail or on the right side. Um, so I started the same way that I did before. One more thing that I need, degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom are dependent on sample size, which is n, n minus 1 are my degrees of freedom, so in this case 36, because my sample size is 37. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go to the table. I like to do my right tail first because it's easiest. I already know the area to the right is 0.025. I'm going to go to my table. I said the area to the right of the critical value that I want is 0 0.025. I said I have degrees of freedom of 36. Now my table is limited, right? It doesn't have 36 degrees of freedom. So I have to round to the closest. And the closest is 40 on this table. Sometimes our tables are limited. So 0 0.025 is the area to the right. So that's this column, third from the right. And 40 are the degrees of freedom that I'm going to use because I do not have 36 here. 59.342. Fifty-nine point three four two are my is my right tail chi squared critical value for this situation. Fifty-nine point three four two. Um, to find my left tail chi squared critical value, I need to determine the area to the right because that's what the graph asks me for. So the area to the left is point zero two five. So the area to the right is one minus. 0.025, which is 0 0.975. This just happens to be the same as our last example. But a 95% confidence level is a typical type of confidence level. So you might see some repetition there. The area to the right of the critical value is 0.975. That's the third from the left. It is not a coincidence, though, that the right tail pi squared critical value was this. For this particular situation, it was third, you know, third from the right, and the left tail is third from the left. That's not a coincidence, because they both have the same area in the tail. Um, and we're using degrees of freedom of 40 because we don't have 36 on this table, so we have to round to the closest that we have. So third column from the left, degrees of freedom of 40, 24.433 is my left tail class grade, critical value. 24. And it's approximately obviously 24.4. So these are my critical values for this particular situation with a 95% confidence level and a sample size of 37 using a table that is limited, which a lot of them are.